I'm on a journey to find the best free things that tourists can do in Singapore so that I can prove Singapore doesn't have to be an expensive city to visit. Recently, this journey brought me to the baking heat right next to the gates of hell. I found strange creatures living here, gentlemen drinking tea, a giant gorilla eating a banana, and many, many topless mermaids inviting you to enjoy their cool waters. This is the story of my first visit to Singapore's infamous free theme park, Hopa Villa, and why I think every visitor to Singapore should check it out. So why would Singapore build a free theme park right next to hell? Decades ago, just before the Second World War, there were these two Chinese brothers from Burma. They had had great business success in Singapore selling their herbal cream, which they promise you has never had any tiger in it. These brothers wanted to pass on to future generations the traditional Chinese values that had helped them build their business empire. To pass along these values, they built a garden of displays around their villa, with each depicting a story from Chinese folklore. The stories reflected the values that they wanted to pass along. Shortly after the gardens were built, war broke out. The villa and gardens were bombed during the war, and the villa was torn down as a result. Over the decades since then, the gardens have been through periods of decline and restoration, but the original vision of the brothers was maintained. Now it appears as if the Singapore Tourism Board is leading the maintenance and management of the park, keeping most of it free for all visitors to explore. I had no idea what the theme park would be like when I started planning my first trip. My Singaporean friends told me it was too creepy to visit, but Google reviews praised the park for its unique contribution to the culture of Singapore. After leaving the train station, and I'll go through in more detail later about how you can get to the park, you're greeted by this large sign welcoming you and a gate you must pass through. Venturing through the gates, I'd climb this scorching hot hill of concrete and I soon regretted not bringing a water bottle. There didn't appear to be anywhere convenient to buy one. There also wasn't a lot of shade, so I recommend you bring a hat and sunscreen. The climb up the hill lends itself to the gift shop and an event space, both of which didn't seem to have much going on on the day I visited. At the top of the hill, I was welcomed by a group of gentlemen to join them for a cup of tea. This was also where the fountain and the void of the demolished villa were there to explore. I also found this eclectic array of animals and the pool of topless mermaids though I never found out the reason why these mermaids are here. If you have any idea, please let me know in the comments down below. Surrounding the void of the villa were the first of the scenes depicted. I had no idea what was going on. There are descriptions of the scenes and what each tale represents, though I was more interested in hunting down the weirdest human animal hybrids I could find. Speaking of shells, I kept seeing these little feeding stations where you could buy food for turtles. It works on an honor system where you can leave a little bit of money for a packet of turtle food and feed the turtles. There were also some bubble stations for kids to blow bubbles and run around with, but was far too hot for me. I guess the local kids are used to it. By this point, I hadn't found anything too creepy. It had felt a little awkward taking photos of topless women, but everyone else seemed to be doing it too. As I descended towards hell though, I found this dark cave. I nearly bumped my head on the way in. It was a very small space for a westerner, but it was worth it to find these creepy fish. The way they stared at me was quite intense. I felt like they wanted to eat me. The gates of hell were right below the exit from this cave, right next to the cafe. I started my journey in the park in the afternoon heat and a cooked meal from this cafe didn't seem appealing, though I did have an ice cream later later on from a traditional ice cream cellar outside the park. My descent into hell was stopped short as the doors were closed. Hell, or more accurately its museum, isn't open every day to the public. It also doesn't meet my challenge of being free. Tickets cost $18 for an adult to visit and I've been told it's worthwhile, so I'll have to come back and give it a go. To find the gates of hell I took the MRT. Horpa Villa is so important to Singapore they built it its own train station. The Horpa Villa MRT station is located on the Circle Line on the western half of it. Alternatively there's a bus stop right outside and all taxi Taxi drivers in the city know how to get there. I've always been told that Singapore is an expensive city to visit, so I was pleasantly surprised to find something so free to enjoy. While I'm still on my challenge of finding free things to do, I did make a list of things that are nearly free for visitors in Singapore, so check out that video next.